Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come to you with your daily encouragement. And uh, we are at chapter two of Life Together. We're on the bo uh, middle of page 41. And uh, you can find the link below if you are interested in uh, printing out and joining us in reading. We're reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Life Together. And what he says is what we do today, who no longer have any fear of night, know of the great joy that our forefathers and the early Christians felt every morning at the return of light. If you were to learn again something of the praise and adoration that is due the triune God at break of day, God the Father and Creator, who has preserved our life through the dark night and wakened us to a new day, God the Son, our Savior, who conquered death and hell for us and dwells in the midst as a victor, and God the Holy Spirit, who pours the bright gleam of God's word into our hearts at the dawn of day, driving away all darkness and sin and teaching us to pray aright. Then we would also begin to sense something of the joy that comes when night is past and brethren who dwell together in unity come together early in the morning for common praise of their God common hearing of the word, and common prayer. Mourning does not belong to the individual. It belongs to the church of the triune God, to the Christian family, to the brotherhood, or what I should say, siblings, brothers, and sisters together. Innumerable are the ancient hymns that call the congregation to common praise of God in the early morning. So the Bohemian brethren sing at the break of day. The day does not now dark, dark night dispel. Dear Christians, wake and rouse you well. Give glory to God our Lord. Once more the daylight shines abroad. O brethren, let us praise the Lord, whose grace and mercy thus have kept the nightly watch while we have slept. We offer up ourselves to thee, that heart and word and deed may be in all things guided by thy mind, and in thine eyes acceptance find. I think these are important words to remind ourselves of the purpose of each part of the day. A lot of times, at least in my life, my life has been centered more towards the evening. I have not particularly been a morning person, which comes as a shock to many people who meet me as a pastor. But part of what I have to do in order to be a pastor who is not a morning person is to wake up quite a bit earlier to get myself awake before I am energized for the day. But, and this is what I've co found common with many of us who have grown older over the years, we find ourselves less able to stay up late at night and find ourselves more able to get up earlier and earlier in the morning. I've just seen that pattern with many people. I'm not saying it's totally common. I think all of us, to some extent, have our own idiosyncrasies. But what Dietrich Bonhoeffer is calling us to, and something I've had to learn, it was not something that came naturally. Whether we call what I had to unlearn sin or not is another question we might want to ask, but... We need to ask ourselves, for what purpose do I get up? And what Dietrich is calling us to, or at least showing us from the ancient church, is that what we're called to is a community. In other words, to be in Christ with others. Not just on a Sunday, but on all days. And I've often said, well, what, a, what about days where you're not in church? Well, if you have a Bible... The writings are those of other fellow believers from a long time ago. In other words, we are never truly alone in our prayers. We are never truly alone in our reading. We are always reading someone else's insight into God, the Bible. And we are often called to prayer. Even the famous prayer that Jesus taught us is not simply my Father, but our Father who art in heaven. 
Now, there's some disagreement about whether the Our Father from Matthew is somewhat different in Luke, where it seems to be Jesus' prayer to the disciples, a much more personal prayer, but still the same format of the Lord's Prayer. But at least what I understand is that all of our prayers, all of our readings, all of our rising, even our songs, whether we use them personally or whether we use them publicly, are always with others. A Christian, even in their own prison cell, even in their own hospital room, even in their own place where they are separated from the familiar, even maybe from Christian fellowship itself, which we had been reflecting on in chapter one, never, never rises alone or prays alone. It is a day for others. And that, I think, is something to remind ourselves about. Sometimes it is a drudgery to get it up. We have an alarm, typically, to make sure we don't sleep in. We have an alarm that is sometimes not greeted with the brightness of, I can't wait to get to work, but more, oh dear, another day. And maybe even some words that we dare not think or even put on our mouth. But what we are called to do, at least what I see here, is to make sure that we do not go at this life alone, and especially that we do not rise alone. It is a day with others. It is a day for others. It is a day at least in the presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father who created light, the Son who brings and saves us from the darkness of night to the light of resurrection, and, of course, the Holy Spirit that places that light into our hearts. It is a day to begin with others. And I'm privileged to have begun this day with you if you're watching in the morning or in the evening. Let us continue to meet together. Let us continue to pray together. Let us continue to do life together. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.